Thanks, Katie, for this kind introduction. We are a little bit late, so I will try to go quickly through the things that have already been said and try to focus some issues that for me are key in today's discussion. The importance of manufacturing in Europe is clear. Uh, I just give a few examples and few numbers. 20% uh, of direct jobs in Europe are connected to manufacturing. 67% of export and 65% of business uh, R&D expenses and activities are connected to, that, to this. Uh, the role of a factory of the future is to uh, further improve the importance of manufacturing in European economy. Uh, looking at the past, in FP7, we uh, developed 151 projects through the uh, Factory of the Future initiative, involving more than 1,000 organizations, 200 SMEs, uh, and uh, uh, a lot of uh, projects which are focused on demo activities, uh, so very close to the exploitation of the result. Uh, this uh, will continue in Horizon 2020, with uh, a budget of 1.15 million billion uh, of uh, contribution for, from the Commission. Uh, the, these activities has been focused since the beginning in FP7 on the role of SMEs, because SMEs are of major importance for the development of the European economy. Uh, Max already said that uh, there are more than, than 20 million SMEs in Europe. And if we consider that in Europe there are also 25 million of uh, unemployed persons, we clearly understand that uh, uh, creating an environment which is favorable to the SMEs uh, development uh, will immediately solve the problem of unemployment in Europe. Uh, in average, if each SME will be able to employ one extra person, the problem of unemployment will be fully solved. Then uh, the strategy of the factory of the future has been clearly focused on the SMEs. Uh, and uh, uh, SMEs are, uh, uh, in spite of that, of that and the importance of involvement of SMEs in the definition of the strategic agenda and of the projects, still a lot of SMEs all around Europe are unaware of this potential support. Uh, and then we will continue to focus on, on this uh, spread of information towards the SMEs to have the SMEs aware of the support that they can get for their business development. Uh, the question that we would like to answer is, uh, can really a European SMEs uh, face uh, the challenges of the global market? Uh, and uh, to, to give an answer to that, probably we have to consider another number. Uh, SMEs in, are considered small medium in Europe uh, till 250 employees. If we compare with US, in US an SME, is, depending on the sector, is considered from up to 500 to 1,000 employees. And if we look at China, an SME is, is considered uh, uh, up to 2,000 employees. So what we have to be aware is that in Europe, SMEs are more small than medium. And, uh, the new environment that we have to create uh, through research and innovation is uh, to have our SMEs growing up, becoming from small to medium. And probably one day we will also be able to redefine uh, the numbers for defining an SME. Sorry. And uh, these SMEs to be competitive has to be focused on uh, simple issues. The first one is the specialization. Uh, the specialization and uh, the clustering, because an SME alone has a very few possibility to really be competitive in, in, in a world market. And ICT is the key factor for all, all this. 
And probably the challenge in Horizon 2020 and uh, I4MS uh, is really to be able to have ICT accessible to SMEs. I jump immediately to this scheme. This scheme comes from a research from uh, Capgemini and uh, is uh, uh, trying to classify the companies uh, in four different types depending on the digital intensity and the transformation management intensity. Uh, the first uh, um, classification are the beginners. Beginners are companies where the management is typically skeptical on the real utility of the digital technologies and uh, is normally limited and have not a mature digital culture. If we go up, we have the fashionists. The fashionists are companies which are not a real uh, strategy about ICT introduction in the company. They have a various, various digital initiatives, but which are not uh, aligned among them. They have a lack of uh, a comprehensive vision, and they have a knowledge which is very fragmented. Uh, when we go to the, the right side, uh, where uh, there is uh, at least a, a management strategy behind ICT introduction in the companies, uh, we, uh, we, we find the conservatives. The conservatives are companies uh, which are, have a few uh, digital initiatives, but which are anyhow uh, st structured in, in, a, in a general view. Uh, so they have uh, a, a, a good vision, but without a very true action plan. Uh, the next steps are really the best in class, the digital innovators. Digital innovators are the, have uh, normally all the processes of the company covered by an IT, ICT strategy. They have a solid vision and a, a very good uh, digital culture in the organization. And uh, what's the situation of different sectors? Uh, you see that uh, you will find in the, in, in the better sectors, uh, the retail, the banking, uh, the high tech. Uh, uh, also, the, in the conservatives, you will find insurances, utilities. Why you will find uh, manufacturing, uh, manufacturing companies uh, in the worst position? And, the question is why? Uh, this is probably something that we have to understand better to focus uh, our research agenda in the future, in Horizon 2020, to help manufacturing companies to really grow uh, with uh, the uh, Industry 4.0, the fourth re revolution. Uh, in my opinion, there are some important issues uh, we, which can justify this position. Uh, the first one is uh, manufacturing companies are typically scared of costs connected to manufacturing. Costs uh, which are connected to very often the complexity, especially companies which are making research, development, uh, innovation and manufacturing. So they have a lot of processes and to have them covered by ICT initiative is very complex uh, to, uh, because the different process will not be linked together. And so this is the first factor of scare. Uh, uh, the complexity is another important factor and the cost is another one. Uh, cost of uh, the development of an ICT strategy and uh, even more cost of maintenance. Uh, cost of maintenance in ICT development uh, for the sm small medium enterprise uh, represents a very important voice. Uh, cost of uh, maintenance of software can go up to 20% of the value of the initial investment. And so this is uh, really scaring the manufacturing company. And uh, last but not least, uh, security. Uh, yesterday uh, have already been said that security have been treated as uh, an important factor. And then uh, uh, this is for sure also a factor of scare, of, uh, uh, of worry of the manufacturing company about ECT. Then in a strategy 
in Horizon 2020 and for the benefits of the SMEs, we will have to consider all these factors and give answers and probably discuss about uh, open platforms, uh, reducing cost, uh, reducing uh, maintenance cost uh, of the ICT products. Uh, this is uh, something we have tried to uh, summarize in our strategic agenda. Uh, our strategic agenda is a dynamic uh, uh, document that we, we will continue to update. Uh, in the six domains, uh, advanced manufacturing process, adaptive and smart manufacturing system, uh, digital virtual and resource efficient factories, uh, uh, collaborative and mobile enterprises, uh, human center manufacturing and customer focused manufacturing, we have already embedded uh, some uh, elements uh, which are strictly connected to ICT for, uh, for SMEs, uh, like uh, manufacturing of custom-made parts, uh, uh, cloud connectivity for future manufacturing enterprises, uh, integrated high-performance computing, collaborative demands and supply planning, uh, traceability and execution, plug-and-play interfaces for factory workers in dynamic work environment, and ICT solution for energy-efficient uh, products life uh, cycles. Uh, the goal at the end uh, is uh, to help uh, SMEs to develop and to help European economy to face unemployment. Uh, from this diagram, you clearly see that uh, SMEs uh, have an inertia in terms of employment, which is uh, higher than a bigger company. That means that when there is a crisis, uh, the employment is not uh, drastically going down, like in the large companies, but then the recovery is also slower. So we need to have more dynamic SMEs. We need to have SMEs which will be more and more medium than small. And uh, this is something we have to help uh, creating the right environment uh, through the research uh, uh, financing uh, to the innovation of, of, the product, of, of the projects and of the products. Um, just coming to the last tools that we have developed uh, uh, as an EFRA association, we have an innovation portal where uh, a lot of information uh, very useful for developing new projects are available uh, to everybody, not only to the members of EFRA. Uh, this uh, innovation portal is uh, mapping uh, all the projects that have been done uh, up to now on the FOF initiatives. And uh, now we have uh, an open consultation with the deadline at the beginning of July, so very close by, to uh, define uh, the, uh, the new priorities for the work program 2016 and 17. So also for this, we need uh, your contribution. Uh, we are not, uh, as I say, I say always, we are not a closed club. We are fully open to new member. We are fully open to new mem members who really want to contribute in developing uh, the small medium enterprise uh, in the Horizon 2020 framework. Okay, so I thank you. I've tried to recover some time, and let's go on, and uh, let's work for the success of the SMEs in Europe, because the success of SMEs in Europe will be also the success of Europe in the world. Thank you. Thank you.